First, we remind ourselves of at least one form of the virial equation. So P times V sub M, where P is the pressure and V sub M is the molar volume, is equal to RT times this particular expansion, where here we have 1 plus B over VM plus C over VM squared, and we can extend this as far as we like, but in this case we're going to stop at the virial constant C, the second power of V sub M. We recall that the work of reversible isothermal expansion is equal to minus the integral from V1 to V2 of P dV. Because of the way this integral is defined, we would like to transform our version of the virial equation into an expression for P in terms of the volume V, not the molar volume, V sub M. First, we will use the fact that the molar volume V sub M is simply V divided by N, where N is the number of moles. And if we make that transformation on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, we get this particular expression. We can multiply each side by N divided by V, and we get that the pressure is equal to NRT times this quantity inside the parentheses. Our task now is to substitute this expression for the pressure into our integral expression here to solve for the work. After the substitution, we get this particular expression for the work. And we can use the properties of integrals to break this into a linear combination of three separate integrals. So that gives us the following three integrals, each of which is not a difficult integral to solve. Our first integral is dV over V, and we know the antiderivative there is simply going to be the natural log of V. Here, over V squared is equivalent to V to the minus two power. So the antiderivative is going to be minus V to the minus one power. So we have our minus here, and this is equivalent to V to the minus one power, one over V. And then lastly, we have over V cubed, which is equivalent to V to the minus three power. So the antiderivative is going to be minus V to the minus two over two. So we have our minus, we have our one over two power, and then our antiderivative is one over V squared. And then we evaluate each of these integrals between the limits of V1 and V2. And we recall we have our minus NRT as a factor in front. Finally, evaluating at the limits and being careful of the various constants, we get that the work of reversible isothermal expansion for a gas satisfying the virial equation in the form that we had shown is going to be minus NRT times the quantity natural log of V2 minus natural log of V1 plus B N squared RT times one over V2 minus one over V1 plus N cubed RT one over uh, V2 squared minus one over V1 squared. One last thing to notice is that if we have a perfect gas, then for the virial equation, the constants B and C would be identically equal to zero. So in this case, if we are trying to determine the reversible isothermal expansion work for a perfect gas, for an ideal gas, then we would remove this term and that term, and we'd be left simply with minus NRT, natural log of V2 minus natural log of V1, which we notice agrees with results that we've already determined. I thank you very much for your attention. Be safe. Have a good one.